Hello friends. As I have already shown you in some of my previous videos, differential protections or residual current devices or RCDs, are a key elements to protect people from direct and indirect contacts. In this video I am going to show you how to test and verify the correct operation of the differential protection, in order to be sure that in the event of an accident the RCD will protect the people. These tests are required by the electrotechnical regulations of many countries during the commissioning of the installation and also periodically. My name is Robert, and I hope this video is of interest to you, in that case don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. As we see in the image, the differential protections or RCD usually incorporate a test button. This test button connects a resistance between phase and neutral outside the toroid, simulating a known leakage current enough to activate the differential protection. Although this test is a help to know if the residual current device is capable of being activated, it is not enough to determine if that differential protection really works correctly, protecting us in case of direct or indirect contact. We can check standards such as IEC 60479 Part 1, which tells us about the effects of the current on people and domestic animals. Based on this standard, we can construct a graph where the horizontal axis represents the current that passes through the human body from one hand to the other, and the vertical axis represents the time during which this current crosses it. In this graph we can define four main areas, based on the effect that this alternating current has on our body. In zone AC1, the effect of the current is practically imperceptible. In the AC2 zone, the passage of the current would already begin to be perceptible. In zone AC3, we would already have muscular contractions but the effects, in principle, would continue to be reversible in most cases. In zone AC4, we already have the possibility of suffering irreversible effects. For example, in zone AC41, we would have up to a 5% probability of suffering cardiac fibrillation. In zone AC42, up to 50% and in zone AC43, more than 50%. Therefore, the objective of the differential protection or RCD is to open the circuit before we can enter the most dangerous zone, that is the AC4 zone, where as we have mentioned, the effects can already be irreversible. To achieve this objective, the differential protections are manufactured based on international standards such as IEC 61008 or IEC 62423, which describe how the differential protections have to behave. We can characterize the behavior of the differential protection through a curve, where the time it takes to activate the differential is represented as a function of the detected earth leakage current. Obtaining a current-to-time graph with many points would be ideal, for example in the laboratory of a manufacturer of differential protections. However, in the field, things are different. Electrical technicians who must check installations have to perform many tests a day, so doing this test as quickly as possible is a must. Therefore, to characterize the differential protection, we can measure the activation time only for three different values of leakage currents. The tests will be carried out at half the nominal current, at the nominal current, and at five times the value of the nominal current of the differential protection. In summary, if we consider a general type residual current device we will have. For a leakage current test value equal to half the nominal value of the differential protection, the tripping time should be infinite, that is, the differential protection should not be activated. For a leakage current test value equal to the nominal differential current, the tripping time should be less than 300 milliseconds. And finally, for a leakage current test value equal to 5 times the nominal differential current, the trip time should be less than 40 milliseconds. For delayed differential protections this activation time can be longer. Performing physically the verification of the residual current device is very simple. We can do it in the electrical panel, simply connecting the phase, neutral and earth test cables downstream of the differential protection. On the other hand, we can also carry out the test directly in a wall socket using the power cable supplied with the instrument. In this way the connection is very simple, although we will have to go to the electrical panel to reconnect the differential protection. Finally, on the screen we will see the differential opening times for each test, as well as the voltage between neutral and earth. In the case of the latest models of Fluke multifunction testers, the 1660 family, the equipment will also provide a visual indication in the event that the differential passes the test successfully. With this help the technician will not have to remember the time limits that must be obtained. Now is the time to take our verification instrument and do a real test. 
In this case I am going to use my Fluke multifunction tester, and since I am going to do the test in a wall socket, I will use the cable supplied with the unit, connecting the three banana plugs of the test cable to the inputs of the instrument, green for ground, red for phase and blue for neutral. Now I can connect the cable to the power socket on the wall. I turn on the equipment, and if I wish, I can perform a test of the instrument's battery to verify its voltage. I turn the rotary knob to the differential trip time check position, which is marked with the delta T symbol. Once in that position we are going to properly configure the instrument according to the type of differential protection or RCD to be tested. With F1, we can select the nominal leakage current of the differential protection between standard values such as 10 mA, 30 mA, 100 mA, 300 mA, 500 mA, 1000 mA or if we wish, we can configure a custom value. In this case I am going to test a typical 30 mA differential protection present in many houses. Next, with F2, I am going to choose the leakage current that we are going to use to carry out the test. We can select among several values, for example half, which means that the equipment will generate a leakage current equal to half the nominal value of the differential protection. We can also choose one time and also five times, and finally we can select the auto option, and in this case the equipment will apply all the above currents sequentially. For this demonstration, I will leave it in auto mode in order to do a full differential test. With the F3 key, we can select the type of differential that we want to test, for example type AC, represented by a sine wave, type A, represented by a rectified wave, type AC with delay, represented by the sine wave with the letter S, type A with delay, represented by the rectified wave plus the letter S, type B, represented by the symbol of direct voltage and finally type B with delay, represented by the symbol of direct voltage plus the letter S. In my case, as I am going to test a type AC differential protection, I will select the alternating voltage symbol. Finally, with the F4 key, we could select between two options, 0 degrees or 180 degrees, in order to select if the test is done with a positive or negative cycle of the voltage waveform, but in this case, as I have selected the auto mode with the F2 key, then the instrument will perform the test sequentially with both the positive and negative cycle of the waveform. Now that we have configured the instrument, we can press the test button to start the differential protection verification process sequentially. We start with the positive and negative cycle at half the nominal current, and the differential should not trip, then the instrument will proceed automatically with the tests with the positive and negative cycle at the nominal current, and if the differential protection works correctly, it should trip in both tests, if that is the case, we will have to reset the differential protection, and at that moment the instrument will detect that there is voltage again and will continue with the test automatically. Finally, the instrument will carry out the test with both the positive and negative cycle at 5 times the nominal current, and again the differential protection, if it works correctly, should trip in both tests. Once the 6 tests have been carried out, we can review the results with the up and down arrow keys. The display will show the differential protection opening times, as well as the voltage between neutral and earth. We can save these data in the memory of the instrument, and so, later we could document the report with these results. In the case of a multifunction tester of the Fluke 1660 series, the instrument itself will show us on the display with a pass symbol, if the differential complies with the maximum opening times mentioned above. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation that I hope you have found interesting. If that is the case, don't forget to drop a like, so that I know that you liked it. In a future video I will show you more aspects related to differential protections, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. See you in a next video. Bye.